Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we're gonna to be discussing what I like to call the premium web design agency project process. All right, so this is something that we actually speak about in the Agency Alchemist training program. But essentially what this looks like is the end to end process for each project that we complete in the agency. Now I do have my screen recording on my Mac just below this camera. So we're gonna dive onto that in a minute. And what you're gonna see is a flow diagram of the end to end process. And this is kind of like a behind the scenes look of what is offered in the Agency Alchemist program. So you're gonna really start to see and appreciate all of the work that goes into each of our agency client projects. And this is the very reason why we're able to sell websites for multiple thousands of dollars or pounds because we offer a high quality level of service, okay? So you're gonna really see what that service looks like. So you're about to get a little sneak peek, behind the scenes look of what is kind of offered within the Agency Alchemist. I mean, this is a very, very small part of the Agency Alchemist. Now, if you're not sure what the Agency Alchemist is, it's actually my own training program designed to help web designers like yourself kind of build the confidence to sell websites for multiple thousands of dollars and reach that six figure mark. It gives you literally everything that you need in order to be successful. Plus we have a guarantee that that's how confident we are in the program that if you're not successful with it, you get a refund. And if you wanna learn more about that, there is a link underneath this video. Now, anyway, back to what we were discussing, the premium web design agency project process Let's have a look at that now. Okay, so premium web agency project process. So you can see here that we've got quite a lot of tasks. Okay, so we're just gonna run through this super quick. So first things first, when you sign up a client, you need to onboard them. So we have this whole entire onboarding process. Okay, so once we've got the go ahead from a client, first up that we do here is send them a contract and an invoice. Every business that we sign up, we do send them a contract and we won't work with them unless they sign that contract. Okay, so we check to see whether they've paid the invoice and signed the contract. If they haven't, then it kind of comes back to this step. If they have, then what we do then is send a welcome email and onboarding link. All right, so we actually have an onboarding link in, in the sense that we have an individual page that we send every client to and it gives them all the information that they need. It allows them to fill in questionnaires and things like that. So we send them that link. And then after a couple of days, we check to see whether the questionnaire has been complete. If it hasn't, then basically we just send them a follow-up. You can see the arrow coming back. If they have, it allows us to then review the questionnaire. All right, so there's an important step here now. If we're outsourcing the design, then essentially we would just check with our designer that they understand the questionnaire. We, we send them the questionnaire to that team member and just make sure that they understand it. If we're not outsourcing it, you can either just come straight here or if we're not, then you load the client into your customer relationship manager, otherwise known as CRM, okay? You then also create a new channel within Slack. So we have a Slack, we have Slack as a tool, as our communication tool where we can communicate with our clients. We can include our team members in there and it's just a central hub of, of messaging and staying on top of information. And then we've got add client to team members, uh, sorry, add client and team members to Slack project. All right, so it's kind of these steps come hand in hand. Right, and that kind of covers the onboarding process. So really nice and straightforward. All right, next we then move on to mood boarding. Okay, and this is actually, this is where a lot of people go wrong. They, they will onboard a client probably pretty badly. You may have been guilty of it yourself. They don't have all the information they need to fulfill the project. And what's worse is they're completely disregarding this step diving straight into the design or worse, they're diving straight into the development. Okay, so we don't do that. Everything that we do is fully custom. And I would anticipate that if you're looking to sell websites for thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars, you would need to be offering a custom solution as well. That's what people pay high ticket money for. So our first step is mood boarding, all right? And this allows us to gather ideas. So we're gathering images, we're brainstorming colors, fonts, layouts, etc., etc. Okay, and we're putting all of this information and we're presenting it within a single artboard. And so we're literally just going online, going to Google, looking at Google images, maybe going to some sort of website inspiration libraries and trying to pull out layouts that, that might resonate with what your customer is trying to achieve. We might pull out a couple of fonts, we'll play around with color palettes, grab, grab some images from Google or, or Pinterest and things like that that kind of suit the color tones. That's what we do at this stage. And then from here, what we do is 
uh, email the board to our client and or add them, add it to our Slack channel. Okay, so we're basically just communicating with our client at this point. Once the mood board is signed off, we can then progress. If it's not, you wanna discuss that with your client. Okay, so that's exactly what we do. If it is signed off, this then brings you to the design stage. All right, so this is this is the fun bit. All right, so you can see here that because we've mood boarded, we we really clearly understand the, the style that we're going with, the, the sort of colors and, and things like that, and it really gives us an idea of what direction we're going in. All right, more importantly, when we reach a stage, we understand what our client wants, but they also understand our vision too, okay? So you're not gonna find yourself in a position where you've designed the website, you've given it to them, and they're like, no, guys, I hate it, it's completely wrong, right? That, that doesn't happen with us. I mean, <laughs> say it never happens. I, I can't say it never happens. It, sometimes you do get things wrong, but um, it completely lowers the risk. Cool, so from here, with the design, we create a website style guide, right? and there's YouTube videos where I've spoken about this in the past, so you should be able to go and check those out. And we then create the homepage, all right? So we, we start with the homepage only. We, we design one page. Once we've designed that, we email the client a link to that page, all right? And then we basically see whether they like it or not. And if they do, they sign it off. If they don't, we have to go through a round of amends talk to them, understand what it is that they don't like, and then we basically just come back here and, and make those changes. Then you email the update. Is it signed off? Yes. Great, once that homepage has been signed off, we can then progress to the subpages. All right, so the reason why we do this is because not only are we sort of trying to be efficient and, you know, what's the word? I wanna say robust, but um, I don't think that's the right word. We essentially are thorough. We want to be thorough. We, we want to be thorough with our work. We, we want to make sure that our client's happy each step of the way. And we don't want to get too far into the project and find out that things are wrong, as I said earlier. All right, so we've kind of, we create all these touch points. We, we ask for feedback and it's, it's a very collaborative project, okay? So from here, once they've signed off the homepage, we then create the subpages. So that might be your about page or your contact page or portfolio page and et cetera, et cetera, all right? You would create each one of those so you could have about, you could have contact, all right? And then you email those pages to your client, all right? Are they signed off? No, amends. If they are signed off, great, come up here. It would be signed off, yes, all right? Once your designs are signed off by your client, you can move into development. Right? So development is the part that's gonna change the most, okay? Because Everyone uses different platforms or we use WordPress. We are looking at Webflow. We know loads of other people that use Webflow. Some people use Wix, it's like people code from scratch. The development process is the bit that sort of like differs the most. But the, the process that we've got here and the process that we talk about in the Agency Alchemist is kind of assuming that people like us at the moment are using WordPress and Elementor. Now the Agency Alchemist as a training program actually we assume that you know how to build websites and that's not what we're teaching you here. We're not teaching you how to build websites within the Agency Alchemist. What we're teaching you is how you can position yourself as a professional business owner, how you can be a problem solver, a, a web agency, and you know build a process that allows you to charge thousands for, not just something that's mediocre and people won't wanna pay for. We do include development steps here and we're just giving insights to the steps that we take, but as I said, the Agency Alchemist program is essentially assuming you know how to build websites. So what we do is we create a subdomain and install a CMS. Okay, so all of our websites are built on a subdomain and we can send that link to the user or sorry, our customer when we want them to take a look at a live working site. We then amend the settings, so things like account settings, permanent structure, we install a theme. So if it's Elementor, we use Hello Theme. We install third-party applications or plugins, so the likes of Elementor, SEO, um, firewall plugins and things like that. We then build the pages within the CMS. So within WordPress, we're actually just going into pages, building out the pages so we have the structure. We're not building out the actual content of the pages or the, the, the design, we're just building the pages so they're in the database. And we can then build the navigation because we have those pages existing in the database. We can build that dynamic navigation. All right, so build header and footer. So this is where we get into the visual part and, and the actual sort of developing the design that we've put together for our client. So you build the header and you build the footer. We make sure that it works on tablet and mobile. So we actually build ourselves 
uh, desktop first. We kind of go desktop, then mobile. Whether whether you want to do it the other way, again, this is up for debate. This this is the area of the process that is going to be the most loosest. But as I said, I'm just sharing with you our process. Once you've built the header and footer, you can build all of the pages from your design. So the home page, the about page, contact, portfolio, whatever it might be, you sort of build the inner the sort of visual structure of those pages. And again, what you want to do is develop on tablet and develop on mobile. Now you'll see that we have some orange options here. And this is kind of just assuming that you would be working with a e-commerce store. So that's the process is slightly different to a common conventional brochure or business style website. When you build e-commerce, you then have to build the store pages. You have to build the purchase process. You have to add payment settings, etc., etc. So that's what this is covering here. Now, if we come back up to the top, once you've finished with development, you ask yourself, are you ready to test? If you're not, you're going to go back into development. Right, if you are, you're going to move into the testing phase. All right, so we actually create a new touch point here as well with our client. And we basically just update them the saying that the development's gone well. We've just moved it into testing. You're going to be basically receiving a link very soon. We test the websites in multiple browsers. So Chrome, Firefox, Safari. What we don't do is we don't test for Internet Explorer. Okay, that's just, that's our discretion. You might want to be different. That's up to you. We test on mobile devices. We check for broken links. You know, we are a uh, sort of SEO agency now. We do web design and SEO, so it's really important that all of our websites do not have broken links. Okay, <laughs> yours should too. And what we do then is add Google Analytics code so they can track their website traffic. And orange here is e-com only, so we would test purchases as well if it was an e-com store. So once you've undergone testing, you ask yourself, is it signed off? Has anything failed in the testing? So if it's not signed off, you would go back to development and undergo this cycle again. But if it is, you would then go to client requirements, All right? So what we do is we prepare a handover training video, All right? So we record a 20 minute video just saying how they can use the website, etc., etc. We create a client login. We email the website to our client or we add it into the Slack channel if that's where they're communicating the most. And they can then add the content or they can supply us with content so we can add it, right? Nine times out of 10, they are supplying the content. We allow them to add it because it really allows them to be familiar with the website and learn how to use it. But we do, in circumstances, add the client content as long as they supply it. We then test, they sorry, they test. So they are then testing as well. So it's kind of like a another secondary round of testing from their end, the more that they interact with it, they might discover things that you didn't discover in the testing phase. If there's any bugs identified, you would create what's called a snagging list, basically just get them to, to load an Excel spreadsheet of, of problems, and I would just go back up to development. Once they are uh, sort of no bugs identified, you come up here and go to the signed off field. So from any point here, just ask yourself, is it signed off? Yes, you then go through the launch sequence we launch all of our websites on the, our customers' domains, our customers' hosting. We don't like to deal with hosting ourselves. So we'd need to acquire the hosting details from our client. Okay, If they don't have a domain already, we'd instruct them to purchase their own domain and their hosting. We create access to the client's CMS and we migrate the website over to our client server. Okay, So remember, we build the website on our own subdomain. We would then migrate it onto their website their hosting, their sub uh, sorry, their domain. We update the domain links within the database. So when you transition or migrate your WordPress database, uh, the, the link structure and URLs don't quite tie up because one will be on your old domain and you're looking for the links to be on a new domain. But anyway, that's far too technical. Uh, so finally, test pages are all loading correctly. If they are, then your website is live. Okay, so that's you know quite a bit of a mouthful and it gives you a, a a really solid overview as to the process that we take within our agency. Now guys, I know that was quite a lot to take in and hopefully you have found that valuable and it's given you a real insight, not only into what we kind of cover within the Agency Alchemist program, but as a web design agency, all of the sort of process points and, and steps and touch points that we have with our clients and things like that. Hopefully it's given you some ideas and the inspiration to maybe change things in your own agency or change things in your process try to better your process and hopefully build the confidence to start charging more for your services because no one wants to be selling websites for just a couple hundred dollars. You'd have to be selling 
a lot of them in order to be a sort of high ticket web designer and start reaching that six figure mark. Now, I'll be honest, not everyone wants to get six figures, but people do want a comfortable life. People want to make money. And you know, a process like this is going to allow you to sell websites for thousands. So hopefully you found it useful. Now, if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification too, and you'll be notified of any future releases on this channel. Now the channel content is designed to help you improve as a web designer, improve your web design business, and more recently to improve your search position on Google. So all of the content is gonna be super beneficial for you, so make sure you go and check it out. There is an end screen coming up with more valuable content too, so stick around and check that out too, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.